All right, we're going to continue with this uh, Shashimani today. But the land of Canaan, it was then. In that time, it was the land of Canaan. And today, for I and I, in the revelation of Rastafari, in this, in this fulfillment of the biblical prophecy, it is I and I. The once lost but now found, Beta Israel, the Ethiopian Hebrews, or the so-called black Jews. And especially us, we who say we are Rastafari. You understand? To whom more is given, more is required. So now we're going to continue with this lecture, this particular teaching right here that is based on the Rastafari Sabbatical study or the Sabbath scrolls, number 37. Mm -hmm. And number 37 is known as, um, right now, here's, here's, here's the code word, here's the password, Shlach. Now, of course, there's no vowel there because the S-A, the sh, is a schwa, right? A schwa. That means it has, it's the sixth order in the Ethiopic fidel or the I, the I sound. So, sh, I, sh, I, lock, sh, lock. Some might put an E there or I there. We prefer to put a apostrophe there because Latin or the English does not have all of the, the glyphs to properly express the language of God, the pure language. So we have to do our best right here. So make a, make a note of that. Uh -huh. And let us continue where we had left off, and we were speaking about the 12 spies and the 10 lies. The 12 spies and the 10 lies. Now, there's a connection in this particular message, this particular Torah portion, Let's see if we have our notes right here. There's a there's a connection right here with um, what we was reading earlier from um, uh, Hebrews chapter three and four. So put Hebrews chapter three and four as a follow up reference. Now in the in, in the break in the brief break between this the second part of this particular lecture. We had noted something, and we said, well, we, we talked about Kadesh, because they left out, they set out from Kadesh, and this portion from chapter 13 to uh, chapter 15, verse, um, verse uh, 41, and um, basically all of, chapter, all of chapter 15. Now, in this particular portion right here, in this particular portion right here, we are we're speaking about the Kadesh Barnea. Now, if you look in the um, if you look in the Schofield um, reference Bible, if you're here at page 184, you will see where it speaks about at Kadesh Barnea, and it speaks of the report of the spies. Then in chapter 14, it's at the Kadesh Barnea, and then there's a three there, and it says the unbelief, the unbelief of Israel. Then in the parenthesis is um, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 to 5, and Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 to 19. Now that gives us the New Testament, the Hadith Kidan, overstand that takes the veil off of our eyes. You understand? Because the New Testament is in the Moshiach, it's in Yeshua. So now we're getting a, an overstanding. You, right? Well, we study this in the Old Testament, we get a basic standing, understanding. But when the New Testament in Christ, we get to over, we get to over, we get to overstand. Now, um, it's interesting because um, this portion here says, and all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night after they had heard the false reports of the ten spies, right, who, 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 who lied. Right, we find that Joshua and Kale, or Hosea, whose name was changed to Yahoshua or Jehoshua, Joshua, Joshua, um, and Kale were the only ones that had faith, that, that really had faith, had trust, had confidence, and therefore had courage. And they were saying, We can do this now. Jah is with I and I. While the others were saying, No, based on what they had, had heard from the false witnesses. And we made a connection with what we have heard over the past 40 years and a generation has heard since 
the 1950s and 60s concerning Ethiopia, Africa in general, Ethiopia in particular, and our Canaan, and our promised land, all right? So they missed Africa, you know what I'm saying, and were wandering still here in the wilderness of North America. And let us remember that when we say we the black people, this is not only I and I as Rastafari, but we as Rastafari, we are those who are the elect. We carry that name. We carry that title. We carry that honor. So to whom more is given, more is required, right? So all the congregation, upon hearing the false reports, they lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. They wept. They wept bitterly. And all the children of Israel, they murmured against Moshe and against Haron. And the whole congregation said to them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt? They said it was better for us to go down to D.C. and die in D.C., die in America. This is, this is where the lost sheep are at right now. And this is why they're running around with skulls and bones, like the Valley of the Dry Bones, and killing themselves and doing all other sorts of abomination. People's like, oh, what's going on? We don't know what's going on. You understand? You need to check Jah. You need to head rest with Jah. Go back to his word. Recognize. Or, they said, would God we had died in this wilderness? They said we should have been left where we were at, Yovas, or we should just die right out here in this wilderness. It's very, very interesting how much that connects with black people. If, if you have the eyes to see the revelation, the vision, you understand? The vision, right? of Jah, the vision of God and his Christ. And where for hath the Lord, and, and why has Yahweh brought us into to this land? To fall by the sword. Why has he brought us into this land? To fall by the sword, right? To fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey. So they already was like, they already gave up. You understand? They already, I wonder how the wives and the, and, the, and the children felt. They were crying, too, because the men had already lost courage and lost heart. Were it not better for us to return to Egypt? In other words, isn't it better for us to retrograde and go backward instead of forward? As we say, forward ever, backward never. That's what the elect are supposed to say. Forward ever. Joshua and Kalei, they were saying forward ever, backward never. But because of these ten liars, these ten false witnesses who had spread a negative report. Now, let us keep in mind that with 12 pioneer settlers for the Shashimani Ethiopia community given by the graciousness to I and I by his imperial majesty. Let, let, let us make that connection right there. And we're going to even break it down how we can even see those ten false witnesses vis-a-vis -vis Jah's word. You know, since it's not personal here, we're not judging nobody here. It's Jah's word here, and the chips got to fall where they may. Verse 4, and they said one to another, so they began to talk and chat amongst themselves. Let us make a captain and let us return to Egypt. Now they're like, let us make somebody who's going to be a captain, who's going to be our leader. Let's, let's have a vote, in other words. They're like, let us have a vote. You know, sound like some of these, these, these people even today. Let us have a vote, you understand, to go backwards, not forward. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, they ripped their clothes. So they were also there. So they also saw things. People that say, okay, what do you say? All right, all right. And, and, and Joshua and Caleb, what do you say? You, you know, and say, well, John told us this, and what they're saying is more accurate, and these are liars, but they didn't do that. They didn't do that. Now, remember, Joshua was of the tribe of Ephraim, and, and, and uh, uh, Caleb was of the tribe of Judah. So we have Ephraim and Judah. Keep that in mind. 
keep Ephraim and Judah in mind because it also fits within this prophecy concerning Ethiopia and concerning the Afro American, the Afro American, the you know the Amharakin who are afar off. Now let's over because Ephraim means doubly fruitful. You know what I'm saying? And the prophecies of Ephraim as well as Judah apply both to the Ethiopians at home in Ethiopia as well as those of us abroad as well. So notice those two there. But remember, there's 12 tribes, there's, you know, there, there, there are other tribes, other peoples, and, 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 and other, other ways of going astray. But it was Joshua and, and, and Caleb that they ripped their clothes and they spake to all the company of the children of Israel. They speak to the whole company, to the whole corporate entity, saying, the land, the land, let, let us understand the land, comma, which we pass through to search it, to, to, to you know, go there and, and seek out, find out what's going on, you know, check it out. It is an exceedingly good land. He, they didn't say, you know, the land, is, the land is not bad. No, they said the land is exceedingly good. You understand? The land is exceedingly Why do you think today, concerning Ethiopia, even other parts of Africa, the Asians are, are, are in there? putting their resources and everything else while we are making billions of dollars out here and have so much money we can tithe it to these prosperity pimps and pastors, and they say the $460 billion go to these prosperity pimps and pastors who, who are per 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 perpetuating the counterfeit, you understand, uh, um, gospel and, and, the, and the false Christ and the antichrist doctrine, keeping these people wandered around. They can only trust God for, for money because they look on the dollar bill, and that's the only place they read God, and they have faith where they see G-O-D is on the dollar, not in the word. You know what that? But anyway, they said the land was exceedingly good, not just a little good, but it was very, very good, very, very good. Right? If Yahweh delights in us, if he takes delight, if we please him, you know what I mean? If we, please, if we meet his standard, in other words, if we please him, if he delights in us, then he will bring us into this land. If he delights in us, he's going to bring us into this land and give it us in spite of what you have seen, in spite of what you have heard or what the situation may appear to be or what the news might say. Right, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Verse nine. Only, only. Here's the conditional. People say the love of God is without condition. No, it's not. Stop lying. You understand? Know Stop lying. You understand? Know it has conditions. You understand? Know Whatever you say, if or only, only that that means do only rebel not. You understand? Know He's not going to do it if you keep rebelling. You know what I'm saying? And he did not do it for those who had rebelled. They wandered and died in the wilderness, and we see a whole generation from 55, from the 60s, going straight through the new millennium, 2007, 40 years, or 40 years, if you please. Only rebel not ye, you all, ye, y'all, against Yahweh, against Jah. Neither fear ye the people of the land. And, and don't be a oh, man, the Africans are so strong, and you see them, they're carrying guns, and you see what's going on. Oh, my goodness. You're afraid, right? And police are committing brutality against you every day and all these other kind of crazy things, and that doesn't bother you. You can deal with that until you be killed or die, right? But it says, only rebel not ye against Yahweh, neither fear ye the people of the land. Don't rebel against Jah, and don't fear don't be in a phobia, you understand? You know, so, you know, don't be in no antichrist depressant mode. Don't be on an antichrist depressant mode, you understand, because of these people. You know, where you go against Christ and you're fearing the people. You know, that means you think these people are stronger than Christ. You understand, these people are stronger than Jah. For they are bread for us. They're bread for us. We can eat them up. Over, over, over what they said. That, that, that Caleb, you understand, know and, and, and Joshua, these people are bread for us. You understand? Know we'll eat them up like we eat our injera. They're like bread for us. Their defense is departed from them. Whatever they got to defend them, because they're declaring the word. 
You understand? It's departed from them. Word, sound, and power is what Joshua and Caleb were seeking to demonstrate to these people who were listening to the lies concerning the promised land saying that don't fear those people that bred for us in defense of departed from them. And Yahweh is with us, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Jah is with us. You understand? Ha'el is with us. The king of kings, Kedemawi, Ha'ila Selassie, Ha'ila Selassie the first in and through Yeshua HaMoshiach is with I and I and I. Right? Fear them not. Don't fear. Get off of it. Stop it. Don't fear. But, he said a word right there, but all the congregation bade stone them with stones. All of them were eager to, when they heard that, they like, can you imagine? They're saying that Jah is with us, and we can do it, and it's ours. And now these people are picking up stones to stone them. They're trying to hurt those who are, who are speaking Jah word and having faith in Jah and encouraging you understand? And encouraging the faith, because they had faith. But those who didn't have no faith, the congregation now who was faithless, they started to pick up stones. In other words, they started to get violent about this particular matter, even though it's supposed to be Jah's people. And the glory of Jah, of Yahweh, appeared. The glory, the kavod, you understand? The shekinah, the glory of Jah appeared in the tabernacle, in the mishkan of the congregation before all the children of Israel, before all the Bani Yisrael, all the Dekik Israel, all of Israel the Joch, right? And Yahweh and Jah said to Moses, how long will this people provoke me? You understand? You know, when you say somebody's provoking, you just don't say provoking. Jah is saying, Moses, how long are they going to provoke me? How long will it be ere they believe me? How long will it be before they have faith in me, they trust me, they have confidence in me? For all the signs which I have shewed amongst them, all the signs that we're able to point to the verity of this message concerning the king of kings, and still ones will come with the stupidest things. You know, try to defend Marcus Garvey when we're talking about the King of Kings, Hala Selassie, and our futures and our children's posterity. You know, we're saying, and carving for ourselves a place in the sun. You know, we're saying, we can't get it through Garvey. You, can't you see that? Okay, he's a great man. Okay, enough said. Next chapter. Let's get it. Let's get to the real heart of the book. You know, we're saying, but no. But so we see a mixed multitude even then that didn't want to recognize the signs. They saw the sign. It's like you're driving down the road, and we're going to such and such a place, and you see the sign that says, turn off to go there, and everybody says, hey, that, that's a sign. And the driver just keeps going past the sign like they don't they say, that's not it. And everybody says, we all saw it. And they, they keep going past the signs. How would you feel? You understand? When you get lost. Then, then the people get lost. You know, that after that, you don't turn off, uh, see the sign, and, and follow the sign. You know what I'm saying? And you get lost. This is what happened to the Israelites. They got lost. But John said, I will smite them with the pestilence, some sort of pestilence. You know, I'm not going to say the AIDS thing or whatnot is that pestilence, but it's just interesting. There's a lot. We can say the crack thing is that. We can say this hip-hop shit is that. You know, what's going on now? I mean, what they call it today? You know what I'm saying? He says, you're going to smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them. That's the key word there in verse 12. Dis Inherit them. Remember we were talking about our divine heritage? You understand? But if ones want to reject it, Jah can disinherit you. You understand? You don't, you don't have to have any inheritance in the promised land. That's what he's saying about these folks right here. He's going to disinherit them and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. He's saying to Moses and Aaron and his family. This is very, very interesting. And the Ethiopian is in that equation. Overstand that. Moses said to Yahweh, Moses said to Jah, then the Egyptians will hear it. He said that, but, but Jah, other people are going to hear it, right? The Egyptians, namely, for thou broughtest up this people in thy might from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. For they have heard that thou, Yahweh, Jah, 
art among this people. They, they know you're amongst I and I. They know who we be, that thou, Yah, Jah, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by daytime in a cloud of in a pillar of a cloud, and in a pillar of fire by night, going forth by day and by night. Right? Now here's what's interesting. Now, he says, if thou shalt kill all this people as one man. In other words, kill all the people as a, you know, it's interesting because a corporation is considered the person. So he's saying you're going to kill this entire corporate entity. In other words, everyone is like one single person, and you're going to kill all of them like killing a person, right? Right? As one man. That's, that's a very key thing he says there, and study it if you can. He says, then the nations, the Goyim, the Gentiles, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, then what, then what, if you do that, here's what they're going to say, because Yahweh was not able, because they're going to think, that you wasn't able to bring this people into the land which you swear to them. Therefore, he has slain them in the wilderness. That's what they're going to think. They're going to think, it's only like people thinking now, we're talking about Ethiopia and Shashimani and Gentiles and nations go over there and they see what's going on and post stuff up on the YouTubes or the, the, the Internet or do a blog or something. They say, yeah, we see a couple of people here, a couple of people there, some Rasta people and so forth and so on. But nothing really. You know, they said that this is Hala Selassie and Jaira Safari. We don't, we don't see it. You know what I'm saying? But it, it's interesting, you know, when you look at it like that, right? Um, he says, um, because you was not able to bring the people into this land, which you swear to them, therefore he or you will have slain them in the wilderness. Now and now I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord of Adonai be great according as thou hast spoken, saying, Yahweh is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity, which is rebellion. Make a note that iniquity is rebellion or lawlessness, and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty. You know he's merciful, he doesn't clear the guilty. You understand? Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation. So it means that each of us, as a potential father, you know, has to really recognize that of those generations, if we go astray, you understand, our children will go astray after us because we've set that example. It, it, this is what this word is saying, that, that, that the fathers who had the iniquity, the children follow in their suit, and it keeps going until three or four generations until people become conscious and say, something's wrong with this family. So, so, something's wrong here until the generation that makes that change. You understand, and stop being rebellious. Moses says, pardon pardon, he beseeches, he, he falls on the mercy of the divine, the heavenly court. You understand? I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people, pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people according to the greatness of thy mercy. So he came before the throne of mercy, and symbolically in a sense. He came before the throne of mercy, right? And he pleaded with the mercy, where mercy triumphed over judgment, right? And as thou hast forgiven this people, from Egypt until now. That in a sense he's saying, well, it's not the first time now. And that's a lot of mercy. That's a whole lot of mercy. Think about it, because people wanted to kill them. I mean, we read incidences, and we see these incidences, and this is written for our instructions to make us wise to our salvation, to help us avoid a lot of the things that, that in ignorance we've gotten into as a people, right? And the Lord just said, Yahweh said, I have pardoned according to thy word. He says, I've pardoned. It's like the judge says, okay, I, according to what you're saying, I'll, I'll pardon. I'll pardon. But as truly as I live, Yahai, Yahai, Jalib, Jalib, as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of Yahweh. Now, there's more to that as you, as you study it right there, but it's interesting that he says that. He says that as I live, my glory is going to be shined through all the earth. That's interesting because this kind of also shows why in the New Testament sense, because of what the, the Hebrews and the, and the faithless Jews did to Yeshua, the son, 
the black Messiah, how it would go to the Gentiles. You understand? And how we also would kind of come into this almost like through what the Gentiles are, through the Gentile interpretation of it, but it was given to us first, and we, our ancestors turned away from it. So the whole earth, in that sense, is filled with the glory. What does His Majesty say? His Majesty said, for my part, I glory in the Bible. The whole earth is filled with that glory. Even the Chinese now are the biggest publishers of the Bible. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the Chinese right now are really getting into the Bible. It's really, really interesting, my people. You know, if, if, you, if you only would receive this wisdom of Jah, Rastafari, because all those men which have seen my glory, right, and my miracles and my amazing feats, right, um, the Ta'amarat, which I did in Egypt, the and in the wilderness, the Midrash, and have tempted me now these ten times, oh, Jah, ten times. There's ten false witnesses, right? There's these ten false um, witnesses or reports from, from these ten spies. And now Jah is saying that these people have tempted me. They have, they have provoked me. They're tempting me. You know, they're, they're violating so much. Remember, Jah is holy. You understand? And they uh, are demonstrating such unholiness. You know what I'm saying? He is moral, and they're demonstrating such immorality that they are tempting me these ten times and have not hearkened. They've not shimmered. They've not really heard. They, they didn't tesemma. They didn't feel it. They didn't hear it. They didn't feel my voice. Surely they shall not see the land. So John is saying, I'm a part in them, but those who have seen my glory, those who have seen my miracles, those who have, you, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have tempted me these ten times, two, two finger hand worth, you understand, and have not listened, hearkened to my voice, surely, surely, boldness, in truth, they shall not see the land which I swear to their fathers, to their ancestors. Now, when you check out this movement of Shashamani, Ethiopia, Ethiopian World Federation, it's been similar to that. Think about that. Those who got involved, the pioneer settlers from like the 60s out of Jamaica and other places in the Caribbean, out of America, you understand, um, their ancestors, going back to Malaku Bay in the 30s, would be those fathers that it was promised to. Because even before the land grant was officially given, we have documentation where ones and ones knew that they had land, that His Majesty had given imperial and crown and crown lands to I and I to I and I people. So he's saying, surely they would not see, they would not see the land which I swear to their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. That that is that that, that should make I and I head rest. And if we just even just ask for forgiveness in the name of Yeshua, just, just straight up, because that's serious fear. He's basically saying that they're dead. They're dead to me, in other words, concerning the promised land. You know, they could stay in Babylon and get big boat, yeah. You understand, in Babylon, drive fancy, all of that. And, and we see a whole generation that, ha that has done that. Even though they've had the funds and the economics, so forth for, for, so on, just still bless them. It's like what, what happened with the Israelites. It says that their clothes and their shoes did not wear out for 40 years. And what do these Negroes in the wilderness think about clothing and shoes? Come on. I mean, I mean which other people is like that on all counts? On all counts. All right? All right. So now there's a footnote right here. There's a footnote right here because it's Kadesh Barnea is, by the unbelief or the lack of faith of Israel, the Beta Israel or lost black sheep there, and the divine comment on that unbelief or that lack of faith, and then it gives a series of scriptures right here to check it out. Um, it says, invested with immense spiritual significance. There is immense spiritual significance in this particular Torah 
portion, especially for us vis-a-vis -vis exodus, vis-a-vis -vis repatriation, vis-a-vis -vis the land grant, vis-a-vis -vis the forward to Africa movement. Because we don't say back to Africa. That was Garvey. You understand? Give thanks for that in that day and that time. You understand? May John have mercy on Garvey's soul. However, in this time, it's not back to Africa. It's forward to Africa. Forward ever, backward never. Now, this is in, there, there's a lot of spiritual significance here, you know what I'm saying, which will help us if we study it, if we pray on it, if we, if we, if we reason with one another. Well, let's get into this particular part. Don't fly over this. You know what I'm saying? This is why we're trying to point so much attention on this area of Scripture because the people had faith to sprinkle the blood of atonement, according to Exodus 12 and 28. They had the faith to come out of Egypt, which symbolically, according to the Hebraic overstanding, Egypt symbolically would be the world, would be the world. So even what's going on in Egypt over there in the Middle East is symbolical to what is going on in the world or the seclorum, since this world order, you understand, of the Gentiles is based on, we could say, mystery Egypt or Egypt of the underworld. You know what I'm saying? Egypt of the underworld, not the upper world, but the underworld, right? So they had faith to sprinkle the blood of atonement on the doors and the posts. They had faith to come out of Egypt, the world. That's like what, even when I and I say, I and I is Rastafari, you understand? Know and we start to make those basic baby steps and everything, that is symbolic of coming out of the world, in that sense being in the world, but not of the world, in other words. But they had not the faith to enter their Kana'an, the Kana'anu, the Kanan rest. They did not have the faith to enter into the Canaan Shabbat or into the Shashemeni Shabbat, the Ethiopian Shabbat. They did not have that faith. They had the faith to do all the basics, you understand? But they didn't have the faith to go in to the Canaan rest. Therefore, Silesi, ergo, though redeemed, though they were redeemed, they were a redeemed people, right? They were a 40 years grief. They was grief to yod hey wow hey They was grief to Yahweh. They were grief to Jah. Do you think, or do you not think, that what has happened to I and I vis-a-vis -vis His Majesty and this land grant and the Ethiopian World Federation, the EWF, over the past 40 years has not been a grief to Jah? In the very same way, since this is His word, and the King of Kings says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. I mean, if you think differently, I don't see the evidence for it. You always say, not in his word. So the spiritual application is interesting. The spiritual application that applies to this is made in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 3 to 11. And we had touched on Hebrews chapter 4 previously in a previous vid in this same series right here. So I would say check out the vid on Hebrews chapter I think the no faith, no repatriation um, part of the series right there. But verse 24, it says, my servant Caleb. It's interesting that Caleb is pointing out here. My servant Caleb, because he had another spirit. This is deep. He had another spirit with him. In other words, those who wanted to stone those who spoke Jah's word obviously didn't have the manifest caduce. They didn't have the holy Spirit. They had a manifest arcus. They had an unholy spirit. That's why it says right here, but my servant, my servant, Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and has followed me fully. He's followed me completely. Him will I bring into the land where into he went and his seed his race, his children, his posterity, right, shall possess it. They shall own it. It shall be theirs. And the true landlord is the giver of that. You understand? And with faith in the true landlord, I mean, you know, um, what can man do? You understand? What can man do to you? 
You know what I'm saying? You have that faith in Jah. You know what I'm um, Verse 25, it says, Now the Amalekites, who are a form of the... It's very interesting when you look at this racially, too, and you go back to the ancestors, and you see those people in that Middle Eastern region, especially the Arabs, the Harabs, and the Mohammedans. There's a link with the Amalekites in that, as well as the, the Canaanites in that as well. But it says, now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwelt in the valley. They dwelt in the valley. Tomorrow turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, or Eritrea, the er Eritrea, you understand, Eritrea, you understand, the Red Sea, in other words. And Yahweh spake to Moses and to Haron, saying, how long, Iskameche, how long shall I bear this kufu, this evil congregation? He already said it. Now notice what John considered evil, right? He wasn't talking about no personal stuff, whatever, but he's talking about the, the big stuff, the head stuff, that they didn't have John in their head and their heart. Therefore, he summed them up as evil. Because John said this, and they contradicted John's word, and according to John's word and the glory of his majesty, those who contradict John's word and claim to be John's people, John refers to them as being evil. He says, how long shall I bear with this evil congregation, which murmur, which murmur against me, which always are mumbling and grumbling and complaining against him. And notice how they, was, they, they didn't directly complain against Jah, but they directly complained against his word. It's like Jah said, go right, and they went left. You know what I'm saying? Or Jah was talking about this, and they started talking about that. That's what he means by murmuring against him and against those who were speaking on behalf of his word, John says, you went against Caleb and Joshua, you know what I'm saying? You was going against me because they were affirming my word. You know what I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me, which they grumble, mumble, grumble, and complain against him to say against his way, against Jah's way. You know, when you hear these people say, oh, it's all my tribulations, oh, blah, blah, blah. Come on, man. You never, where's Jah's word? Yovis, say to them, this is what we just say to them, as truly as I live, saith Yahweh, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Remember what they said? They said that they want to die in the wilderness, right? So as they've spoken in my, but, but notice what, What's being said here? John is saying, right? John is saying to um, to Moses, right, right. He's saying to Moses and Aaron, for you, for y'all to say this to them. And so here's what Moses and Aaron were to say to the people: As truly as I live, saith Yahweh, as ye y'all have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses. Your carcasses, your carc asses shall fall in this wilderness. And all that were numbered, all that were numbered of you according to your whole number, from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me, doubtless. Don't doubt this. You're all a bunch of doubters, but don't doubt this, John is saying. Ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save only, in other words, save except for Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. But here's the good news, and this is good news even for this generation now. Your little ones, the little ones, the children, which he said should be a prey, the children which you said should be, in other words, they were saying, they basically gave up, notice, on their children. They were, they were like, we can't continue going Jah way. And, they, and they, they almost like put the woman and the children before them. And Jah is saying, all those who are 20 years old and upward, who have been murmuring against me, you're not going to enter into the land. I'm going to give you what you want. What you said you want, you're going to get. 
You understand? And he's saying right here, your little ones, which you said should be a prey, them will I bring in. It's those same little ones who you were saying couldn't make it. You know, like ones and ones saying, you know, how we've been hearing about Africa, all this negative stuff from black folks, preachers, pastors, other civil rights, and so forth and so on, because they did the same thing the Israelites, in that sense, did. They turned their backs on his majesty, turned their backs on Ethiopia. You know, saying? they turned their backs on African unity. You know, was, and now we have a whole new generation coming about that is waking up to the, the light of Rastafari. They're waking up to this prophecy. They're seeing the, 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 the truth for themselves. You understand? And they're like the little ones. Josh saying, he's going to bring them in. And ye shall know the land which ye have despised. That's interesting. That is interesting the way he says that you're going to know. He says, you're going to die in the wilderness, but... You're going to know the land which you have despised. That is interesting because black folks, so-called Negroes out here in America who live in a little, a, little, a little apartment or some shit like that, don't got no land, don't got no nothing, you know what I'm saying, can't plant nothing, can't do nothing, don't own really nothing and everything. They want to hold on to nothing. You understand? They want to deny this particular word. And it's kind of interesting that when you talk about Ethiopia, you talk about Africa, you understand? Know Most of these niggas that don't own nothing, that don't got nothing, even if they own the house, they don't own the land, that is the Gentile, foreign, national, European, Anglo-American law. You know, they don't even know the law. You understand? Know because, look, they don't know Jaws' law. You understand? Know Although they talk about their grease cans or Christians or something like that. Very slippery people. But it says, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. Is Ethiopia despised in black people's eyes? Of course. And careless Ethiopians from home or abroad, they despise this land. But look what's going on. The Gentiles are trying to get in there. The Europeans are trying to get in there. The Americans are trying to get in there. And when you talk to a nigga about Africa, you know, he's an Africa. I'm no African. Well, they, they despise the land. But as for you, your carcasses. Your cock asses, they shall fall in this wilderness. Maybe that's why they be having the pants down below their butt and stuff, because that's a cock ass. You understand? A cock ass. That's a cock ass, right? And your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years and bear your whoredoms. Oh, my goodness. You don't see what's going on with niggas nowadays? These niggas nowadays are porn stars. Wow. They, 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 they're doing it, man. You know, they're doing themselves. Ain't that something? You know, they're not doing job will, but they're doing themselves. What it says, the children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years and be your whoredom. So the children are going to be the whoredoms. It's like the older folks, older nigger folks, they'd be like, I don't know what's going on with these children nowadays. I don't know why they're doing all of this. But when you look at it very carefully, it's like the children pick those things up from that generation, that, that civil rights generation, that 40-year wilderness of North America generation. Your word is true. And they bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted. I smile because that's how we talk, until you be wasted. Yo, man, I was wasted. It says, until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. Now, now let's interpret this. The wilderness is the wilderness of North America. You understand? Know the people that are speaking to in this revelation time is the lost sheep, black people, black folks, right? And their carcasses are their bodies, or they're dying, and so forth and so on. Their dead bodies are wasted. People living their lives, they get wasted, getting high and to get wasted, doing, doing whoredom until they get wasted. You understand? Almost like killing themselves in the wilderness. Verse 34, after the number of days in which he searched the land, even 40 days each day for a year. So what John is doing right here, Yah is doing right here, Father is, um, he's announcing judgment. You know what I mean? He's announcing judgment right here. He is like a sentencing. This will be the sentencing phase. He already announced the judgment. This is the sentencing phase. He said, all right, for the days that y'all been searching out the land and coming back and talking shit, talking lies, discouraging the people, now the people have no heart, no will anymore to go into the land. Therefore, for, for each year of day, I'm going to give you a year. You understand? 
40 years. You understand? Deal with that. Shall ye bear your iniquities? 40 years. Can it be that black people in America have been so-called bearing their iniquities for 40 years? Could, could it be this is what we're seeing? People, a lot of folks say, what's wrong? I don't know what's wrong with black people. Oh, what can we do about black America? Oh, how come black people are behind like this and are like that and so forth and so on? And, and, and why black people's situation like this? They, they babble on about this black people shit, right? But John Ray told you in his word. But, but see, the, the lying preacher and pastor want to tell you that you're a Gentile. You understand? Well, you could believe you, you're a Gentile if you want to, but when you look at the facts, it seems like what happened to Israel is happened to you folks, and don't even happen to the European Jews who call themselves Jews. They haven't experienced this. Let's understand that. They're converted. It's a religious thing for some, quote, end quote. We'll deal with that when we come to that, right? But right here it says, uh, each day for a year shall ye bear your iniquities, even 40 years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. Wow. That's like a breach of contract. You're going to know my breach of contract. You understand? You're going to know my breach of promise. You understand? I'm going to break this promise with you because you already said you have no faith in me. So, what do you want to do? Die in the wilderness? Okay, I, I, can, I can do that. I can give you that. You can die in the wilderness of North America, and, and, and look what's going on. A whole generation, you know, the whole generation has, has gone, just traces from 67 to 2007, and still the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. I, the Lord, I, Yahweh, Ananoki, have said, I will surely do it to all this evil congregation. I'm going to do it to all of them. All of them are going to get it done to them. They think they're doing themselves. No, they're going to get done. That are gathered together against me. Basically, they were gathered. See, it doesn't look that way when you read it. It's just like they just have a difference of opinion. You know, it's just they have a difference of opinion. Difference of opinion with who? With Ja? <laughs> After all, you see, nigga? You know, that's like somebody, you know, we can, you, you can see the examples if you're conscious. If you're not, have somebody smack you so you can wake up, right? Um, this is serious, folks, that are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. And there, when you look at black people's situation in the markets, like these niggas are being consumed, that's why we point out this book again to you. Right here, The Valley of the Dry Bones, an excellent book. You understand? Churches should have Sunday schools on this book. You understand? It doesn't specifically say to the people of Ethiopia, Ethiopia, what it says to black folks is that y'all are Israelites, y'all are lost sheep. You understand? And the answer to all of your problems, believe it or not, like it or not, is right there in the Bible. You'll be like, well, I, read my, I read my Bible, my preacher. You, that's, the, that's also part of your problem, too. You know what I'm saying? Because your preacher's worshiping Antichrist. You know what I'm saying? John is only having so much mercy with them. You know, because some of them probably really don't know no better. But that doesn't mean that you can't learn better. You know what I'm saying? Ask, seek, knock, seek it out. Find the truth for yourself. So in this wilderness, they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. And the men which Moses sent to search the land, who returned and made and made all the congregation to murmur. In other words, those who returned and made believe. They made the people believe. They came back with make-believe. They wanted to make the people believe, oh, this is a beautiful land, all right, but they got people there. They got cities. They're strong. The land is just eating up people. <laughs> right? He says, he said, made the people to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land. Now, overstand this. He's, John is saying that these ten, these ten lying brethren, brethren, you want to call them brethren? I guess we call them brethren too, or now they be called elders. You, you're calling them elders. You understand? I call them olders. You understand? Um, it's very, very interesting because they, they brought a slander upon the land. Now, you see how serious that was? They brought a slander against the land. 
Not Johnny wasn't saying that that because they said there were giants or the Anakim there, the giants were there, or or that they were powerful cities or big buildings or whatever. Johnny didn't say anything about that. That that was you could say that was the some truth to it. That was the only truth to it. He said that they brought back a slander. They slandered against the land, his land, the promised land. I want you to think about that when you think about Ethiopia. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all be talking about, oh, Ethiopia, all those people over there, the people starving. That's not, that's not what, what John is saying to us right here. They, they're most likely starving, you know what I'm saying? Because their brothers and sisters in the diaspora, you know what I'm saying, have made a deal with the devil, you understand? And now are paying for it, paying for it painfully. Oh, you didn't make a deal for the devil? Why you got his name? Huh? Why you got his name? What do, what do you get for that? Do you get any props because you're carrying the, the devil's name? You understand? Anyway, even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plague. They died by a plague. That means they died horribly. They, so some medical thing or something like that. You can look at it today. But they died by the plague before Yahweh. But, on the other hand, Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of the men that went to search the land, lived still. They lived. You understand? So the, the liars died off. They faded away and became like, you know, like garbage, you know, like, because that, they were garbage. You know what I'm saying? Lying against John and turning off and turning away so many people. I want you to do your own homework about the Federation and look over the reports and look at what, at what has been said over and over by many of these same ones who went in to search out the land and look how they brought back all these false reports and discouraged the people but never affirmed the word of John. They never affirmed this word, the glory of his majesty. You know, those who you call your brethren and sister, and they're not I and I's because they're not doing the will of my father, of our father and his Christ. And Moses told these sayings to all the children of Israel. So now he went and communicated the message to them. And the people mourned greatly, as they should have. You understand? People say, well, oh, man, look at it. They're feeling bad. They should feel bad. I mean, I mean, how else can they? Nowadays, people, they could, they could take drugs or, or some kind of pharmaceuticals, or they could drink, or they could go to parties. Maybe that's why the people be doing that. So they, because they, you know, it's interesting because people say, why do black people have all this like kind of uh, depression, and then they have to take antichrist depressants then to feel happy? Because John is trying to show you something, trying to tell you something, you know. And John sent ones out there like I and ourselves and others, but folks, you know, don't want to. They they don't want to get it. So so mourn, mourn, cry, weep, feel sad, feel bad. You chose that. You know what I'm saying? Because you chose to listen, have faith in nonsense. You, 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 chose, to, you chose to believe or have faith in, in, the, in the BS, you know what I'm saying, that you was hearing instead of in John's word. So you, you made a choice there. You know what I'm saying? You'd be like, oh, but to believe that John will do this, well, yeah, exactly. As long as you do your part of the contractual covenant agreement, he will do his part. But once you don't do your part of it, he is not obligated to do his part. And thus, if you come halfway in and said you will do and then you don't do, it's a judgment because it's a breach of, it's a breach of contract. That's what they call it, right? And they rose up early in the morning and got them up to the top of the mountain saying, Lo, look, we be here. And we will go into the place which the Lord hath promised, for we have sinned. Yeah. Did you just, did you just, are you reading this too? You know what I mean? Can you read? If you can't, just start out. Just, just read this right here. Numbers chapter 14, verse, verse 40. 1440. 1440. Yeah, that's it. And they rose up early. After the people heard this, they cried, they weeped and stuff, they felt bad. Then they rose up early in the morning. They got them into the top of the mountain. They went all the way to the top of the mountain, right? They were on a mission now. They were going to work it out, saying, Lo, look, we be here. Here we be. We be here. And we will go into the place which Yahweh have promised. For we have sinned. Oh, now you get it. You know, now you recognize, yes, we, we, uh, I'll do it now. 
You know, they say like in a china shop, you know, you break something, you own it. You broke it, you own it. And Moses said, wherefore now do you transgress the commandment of Yahweh? He says, why are you trans, like, like, what is the reason now that you're trans, they thought they were doing good. They're like, hey, you, we're going to have the praise and worship right here. You know, we're going to work it out. You know what I mean? Um, wherefore now do you transgress the commandment of Yahweh? But it will, it shall not prosper. He said, you know, it's, why are you doing this? They went all the way up to the top of the mountain, and they said, look, we be here. What are they expecting? Jehovah's, Jehovah's craft, his ship to come back or something? And, and they say, okay, I accept, your, I accept your apologies or something like that. Moses told them, he says, you're transgressing the commandment of Yahweh. You understand? Know it shall not prosper. Go not up, for Yahweh is not amongst you. You know what I mean? The, the, the craft is not there. In other words, the close encounter, you, you, you missed it. You understand? It's gone. Don't go up there. You understand? For Jah is not among you, that ye be not smitten before your enemies. It's interesting because, remember, each of these, each of these verses is kind of showing you a different highlight of a certain scene. And here it appears that the day has passed to another day. The people were thinking about it. Somebody came up with the, the, <laughs> the great idea, right? That's what they thought it was, the great idea. We're going to go up to that mountain, you know, where Moses always be going. And we're going to go there ourselves. And we're going to let John know that we're we sorry. We'll be sorry. We're going to do it. We'll, we'll do it now, right? Right, right. We'll, we'll, we'll do it now. Now that, we un, now that we hear such judgment, we're going to do it. But then Moses said, the key thing he said is like, why now, wherefore now do you transgress the commandment of, of, of the Lord? And I've read this before. I'm like, transgress? Because they wasn't supposed to go to the mountain. You remember from, from Exodus? You know, they weren't supposed to go up, up, up there. Now they're going to be playing like priests. They're going to be playing like their own representative. John said, I chose Moses and Aaron, and I'll speak to them. If you have anything, you speak to them. You understand? I'm tired of you all. I wanted to kill you a long time ago. But Moses made a pretty good legal defense. You know, he made a pretty good defense, and he appealed to my mercy. You know, and um, I listened to him. But, but, but Moses is saying, don't go up there. The Lord is not among you, that ye be not smitten before your enemies. In other words, Jah had to, had to take his presence away from them. They thought he was still amongst them, and he had, he had left. Jah had left the camp. You know what I'm saying? He had left the camp because he was saying, I am holy. It's almost like you can only endure so much. You understand? You can only endure so much. So it says, for the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and ye shall fall by the sword. See, now when he recognized that their enemies were going to kill them, now they began to say, uh-oh, maybe we need to apologize. Because ye are turned away from Yahweh. You are turned away from Jah. Therefore, Jah, Yahweh, will not be with you. In other words, he's saying, you brought this all on yourselves. It wasn't like he's doing something to, because, you know, not, Jah is not doing anything wrong. You, you know, clearly in this verse right here is interesting because it says right here, it says, because Ye are turned away from the Lord, therefore the Lord will not be with you. You all have turned away from him. And, you know, it's almost like when people say, well, how, how have we turned away from him? You know, like, you, you guys really are that, that stupid, right? You really going to play that. You know, they turned away from him, so he's not amongst them. And that's why Moses said very, quite frankly, like, that's why your enemies, they know this. They know it, and they're going to kill you. You know what I mean? Basically. And you're going to fall in this wilderness. But they presumed, <laughs> listen to verse 44. They presumed, chan, chan, chan. Now, you know these, these got to be niggas. Come on. You know these got to be black people. And not just any black people. I'm talking about the black people in the Americas and the Caribbean, the black people, this black people over here in exile. You know in the diaspora. You know it got to be.